welcome to Music right. the Moving Image. Thank you for having us. Thank you all for coming, too. Yes, thank you. I hear some people have saw all four films today, and that is like, I mean. Yeah, who, who, can I see hands? Who says, wow. Wow. Amazing. <laughs> From Round the ahead. bottom of our heart, thank you. Yeah, thank you. What was that like to watch these four in a row? <laughs> a lot. A lot. A lot. A lot. <laughs> That's stern but fair. <laughs> so, are you glad you came back and did another one? Are you, what, you know, it was about basically 10 years or longer since the last right. one. Um, did you think you were going to make another one? Is this something that sort of went through waves of maybe we will, maybe we won't, or I mean, how did we get here? Uh, I didn't think we were going to make another one, but in, I have been writing for over 10 years since the last one, just in case. <laughs> so around 2018, I started getting an overwhelming feeling of, God, I really want to shoot these ideas. And then I became obsessed, and then I sat down with Jeff. When and he gets obsessed, that's when everything, that's when it starts happening, because yeah, then he yeah, can't yeah, stop yeah. himself. Once it, the switch goes on. Yeah, the switch went on, and luckily everyone was down, and uh, we got to do another one. Can I ask you about the writing then? So what does the writing look like? If you're spending all that time writing, are you writing outlines? Are you scripting it? Are you thinking about beats? Like, what is it? What does the writing look like? Uh, I get an idea or a shred of an idea and put jackass4 in the subject line and then email it to myself, whatever the idea may be. Yeah. Um, and it's usually like one or two lines. Uh, sometimes it could be more, but it's just a, a shred of a thought, which I introduce to Jeff and Spike and everyone else, and then everyone touches it and adds on to it, and it becomes something. And is that how the kind of sort of stunt on top of the stunt happens, too? Like, there's an original idea, and then a stunt gets added to it? Sure, yeah. I mean, it's, uh, luckily, I mean, everyone. It's not just the writers or producers or cast. It's like everyone on the crew starts. And we've been together for over 20 years. And everyone has the same sense of humor. Mm -hmm. So uh, once everyone touches it, it becomes better. Does anybody ever say no? Sure. <laughs> but that's when Jeff Tremaine steps in and he'll like either bulldog him into the idea or be their best buddy, take him for a walk. He has multiple ways of like getting someone to do something. So like, well, you send the idea. Uh, actually, uh, Jeff is, uh, was supposed to be here, and he got COVID the other day. So we, yeah, but uh, I thought we could make him a video really quick. If uh, everybody will, uh, most what we were saying, talking about this the other day. Mostly, the, the amount of times people say "fuck you, Jeff," during the course of this movie is yeah, <laughs> or "fuck Jeff" or "fuck Jeff." Like that happens a lot. <laughs> <laughs> so we thought we could make a quick video if you guys will s greet Jeff with our, our, our familiar Jeff greeting. One, two, three. Fuck Jeff! Yeah! <laughs> <laughs> Thank you. <laughs> All right. <laughs> Good, that, that, I mean, I'll send it to him right now and he'll, he'll respond. Is that Mark fucking Gonzalez? Where is Mark? Wow! Yeah! Mark. All right, big hand for Mark Gonzalez. We also, we also have Lance Bangs here. Where's Lance? Oh, here's Lance Bangs. Look at that head of hair. And he wears a hat. Yeah! yeah. <laughs> his hair, yeah, we love his hair. Lance is a beloved figure in the Jackass. Yeah. And, and usually he pukes once a film, yep. but in Jackass Forever, he Pukes about six times, <laughs> but only two made it to the screen. Oh, okay. But his tummy Sorry. was very sensitive in this film. <laughs> what are you shaking your head for? Are you, am I telling the truth? No, that's not right. How many times did you puke? I, like six, but I don't have a lead. <laughs> <laughs> uh, someone rubs off the skin on her testicle, and the smell that's inside a scrotum comes out. <laughs> <laughs> hey, Lance, no one else puked but you. <laughs> He does, he gets in there, he gets a shot. He knows what he needs to do. He gets close and pays the price. The, uh, Jeff and Cossack and Steve have weaker stomachs than me. They didn't puke, I'm sorry. 
Well, so the smell of the testicle makes me think of a question, which is, um, how, has there, how, how has there not been a smell-o-vision version of Jackass today? We discussed that on Jackass 3D, I believe, but I, I don't know. We saw something shiny and forgot about it. <laughs> Well, we can all be, we can all have, you know, vomit six times next sure, time. Sure, yeah, sure. Um, so I'm curious about um, the fact that, I don't know if you, I guess you know this, but the New York Times selected Jackass Forever as a critic's pick. Really? Yes. I didn't know. Which. <laughs> <laughs> and just a, a cursory glance at the previous three films said, you know, the Metacritic or Rotten Tomatoes was never really much more than 50% in terms of critics. This one's already over 80%. Have critics caught up to you? Have you gotten better? What's happened? I think so. <laughs> <laughs> well, we couldn't get any worse. <laughs> you know, I feel like Jackass 3D was at Purina at MoMA. This one gets to come at MoMI. Obviously, yeah. there's some folks who've always been fans and have you know, observed that you're doing interesting, innovative things. But to go from basically 30% approval rating to 80% approval rating, but basically doing the exact same stuff, yeah. I feel like we've caught up to you. No. <laughs> I can't explain it. <laughs> um, uh, <laughs> I, so a big difference this time around is for the first time we've had a, a, basically a new cast join the old cast. And I'm curious about uh, the reasoning behind that. Well, we weren't sure how it'd look if all the old guys were still doing the stunts and pranks. And so we wanted to bring some fresh blood in. And, and Spike, to his credit, insisted that we need to do a two-day test to see if it felt sweaty with us doing this. And, you know, we're at a certain age. That's a nice way to put it. <laughs> and we're not only testing the new cast, but we're testing ourselves. Mm -hmm. and, and thank God Spike had us do that. Uh, but after an hour, it felt amazing. Mm -hmm. We're like, it's on. As soon on. as we were on this, uh, as soon as we we're all together and start shooting, the first bit we did is a human ramp, and it was just the, the spirit was on, and everybody was so happy to be there. And then the, the new crew fit right in, and um, yeah, it was like, uh, it, yeah, it, it was just, yeah, it told us, it told us it needed to be made. Right. Well, the first thing we shot actually was the hot sauce enema where we had funnels running into everyone's bottoms and do it with hot sauce. And it's, it's, it was really funny, what? right? I thought it was too much. When I, we were doing it, I'm like, this will never make it in the movie. But we watched it and it was really funny. But there was just so much uh, C and B in this movie that we're like, maybe that goes in 4.5. But it had been so long since I had done a Jackass film, I forgot how to do an intro. And I was like, ah, oh, Jeff, what do I say? And he helped me and then we finally got it. But, you know, I forgot how to do an intro. How did you cast the new crew? I mean, what did that look like? I'm sure it was different than the casting process in the late 90s. Yeah, and then, then, and, and when we did, what we usually did was all people we knew. And this time was actually a lot of people we knew. Uh, Jasper was part of Odd Future and Jeff had made the uh, Loiter Squad show with him 10 years ago. And, and Lance did do, actually. And uh, the uh, Eric Menakis Knoxville had worked with on a movie. Uh, and um, Steve-O worked with Zach Holmes. He yeah. shot with him before. And the only two we didn't know were Poopies. <laughs> He's like a, 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 a more stone Spicoli, but not as quick. <laughs> but he's the sweetest guy. He's got such heart. And Rachel Wolfson, I was a fan of her Instagram. She's a stand-up comedian, so funny. And we brought her in to meet with us, and she was great. And her, it's her family, her mom is a judge, and her dad's a DA in Vegas. Her sister's an attorney. <laughs> she has a joke that, because her mom put away OJ, she's like, the same person who sent OJ away sent me to my room as a child. But we got out. <laughs> um, Poopsies might be the most sensitive person I've ever seen <laughs> in a jackass film. He, he kind cries. of everything reacts to. Yeah, <laughs> yeah. The, the best thing is like at the end when during the, uh, the, the end sequence, what do we call it? Vomitron. Vomitron. He's crying. He's full on crying. 
And Jeff couldn't be more happy. He's like, oh, Poopies, Poopies is upset. Hey, get in there, Poopies, get in there. <laughs> the other thing about Poopies, which is as we were editing, we realized he kind of narrates everything. He just says totally. everything he sees outside. He's like, oh, no, army trucks. And it's like, <laughs> and he's oh, like, no, it's paintball time. Yeah, it's, like, it's like perfect narration. It's useful, yeah. yeah it's very helpful. <laughs> Did you feel competitive with the newer performers? No. Like they... Because, or did they feel competitive? They had to prove something to you. I, I, I'll say no to that, but everyone is competitive with footage. If someone gets something really good, they're happy for them, but they want to top that, mm -hmm. which works out great for us. <laughs> <laughs> yeah. But I feel a special niche in the, the films that I, you know, but I don't, I'm just happy. I'm a producer, so I'm like, hey, go nuts. <laughs> <laughs> um, yeah, you don't get surprised as much as the others do. Jeff and I, and Spike know 98.5% of what's going on, and we keep 1.5% away from each other. Okay. Because we gotta keep it honest, right? Yeah. And we gotta keep it dishonest, right? <laughs> <laughs> um, which makes me think about, uh, in particular, the, like the, we already mentioned it, the kind of the Russian doll approach to the pranks, where there's like a prank, and you think it's that prank, but then it winds up being another prank. Is it just that like you have like consent for everything, no matter what? Because it's one thing to sort of know what you're about to do and agree to do it, but then you don't quite know in these situations. Well, it's, yeah, you never know. We shoot, we, we, we always shoot, from the first movie, when we did the TV show, we ended up airing stuff that wasn't our best stuff, and then when we did the movie, we're like, let's only air the best stuff. Mm -hmm. And so we shot twice as much. We shot like four hours worth of stuff and then cut it down. So we always overshoot, and then in the bits, once we have someone in a prank, we always like, what else they'll fall for it? And we just keep saying, yeah, yeah. you know, sort of make it keep going and going into the, as many chapters as possible. And mm -hmm. they usually fall for all of it. It's <laughs> amazing. Aaron especially. Yeah. And then the, what about the cameos? So like are the folks come to you like I want to be in a Jackass film or are you recruiting them or it just sort of happens as friends that they decide that they could work? Probably both. It, it depends <laughs> on, uh, with in regards to Machine Gun Kelly, Eric Andre, and Tyler, the creator, we knew them, right? Jeff had worked with them or I, I had worked with them and, um, and, you know, I asked Jeff, because usually when we bring in special guests, we don't, give them the full, you know, the full treatment. Right. But I was like, Jeff, like, what, what about Eric Andre? Do we, does he get the full treatment? And he's like, kill him. <laughs> <laughs> okay. <laughs> but he seemed like he was up for it. Oh, no, they loved it. Yeah. Like, uh, Machine Gun Kelly has a jackass two on his wrist, so it's like, you're getting the full treatment. <laughs> Um, and you mentioned Aaron. It feels like he's the star of this film, as it turns out. Like, and I, people have been writing about that, that he's sort of the subject of a lot of the abuse. And Well, it's his fault, really. <laughs> if he didn't give such great, horror, hor horrified reactions, we wouldn't do that to him. Yeah, his anger is hilarious, and it's, it's, it's the gift that keeps giving. <laughs> so, I mean, I feel like this is mostly to you, Johnny, but is there, do you amplify your reactions in making cinema? Are there moments where you're like, I'm gonna play this up? Because I feel like you know more than other people, so maybe you're less surprised by, the, by certain yeah, things. Yeah, I don't know so much. <laughs> um, no, no, like when you're dealing with bulls and bears and things that can forever alter you, you your, your emotions are heightened already. So everything's honest. That's all we got is honesty. If we didn't have honesty, what do we have? Right. Right. And it also just, even when you're shooting, it never feels relaxed. Like anything can happen anytime and you're always like, you know, covering your crotch if you're holding <laughs> a camera. And the, uh, but the, um, yeah, it's like there is always an electricity that once, once everyone starts getting together that no one really knows what's gonna happen. And, mm -hmm. and you know, and also you don't know what's gonna happen if you get hit by a bull, obviously. That's I know what's gonna happen. <laughs> <laughs> yeah. I feel like that's the symbol of everything, that you keep going in with the bull. Well, like why? Well, like why, but also like I feel like if whatever that answer is must be why you do this in, at all. I love bulls. <laughs> they give great footage, right? <laughs> and they over, the producer in me overrides the performer. Because mm -hmm. I know it's going to be not nice, but I mean, it's great footage. <laughs> and I just love bulls. Um, they hate you. They want to kill you. <laughs> It's not personal, it's just business. <laughs> <laughs> By the way, the man in the front row has great Chuck Taylors. Oh, the best idea I've taken from you, Dan. <laughs> <laughs>
Oh, thank you. Red Chuck Taylors. Um, <laughs> I, I'd love to talk about the way things look out on, on the set. Is the set, you said the, the fact that you know, people are already sort of, it's, an, it's a bit electric. People feel like anything can happen. Is it relatable to another film set at all? Is it just an entirely different space? Do you have film shoot days that are like other films? Like, what is a More, day shooting like? When we like? first started, we didn't. When we did the show, it was we had a little office in Hollywood and little mini DV cameras, and we just shoot here and there and grab stuff. And it was just you know usually a couple of us with a couple of cameras. And then on the first movie, we kind of shot more like that, just bigger cameras, like beta video cameras, but still pretty running around. And then on the second one, I'd say it started getting bigger, and uh, we started you know, having bigger cameras. So now, like on the third and fourth one, they are you know they're proper setups and they're proper you know we have multiple cameras and HD and um, and we have an AD now who's amazing Joe, and uh, and so there is a, a you know there's, there's, there's trucks like they, it looks like if you pull up to it it looks like mm -hmm. a, a film crew doing a movie mm -hmm. and then you walk onto the set and it's mayhem and. <laughs> you know, balls and everything. It's tricky though, you know, the first movie we shot like a punk show mm -hmm. and this one was like a Rolling Stones tour, mm -hmm. you know, and and it's tricky to keep the footage the same. Sure. Right, uh, because you don't want to pan over and have a bunch of trucks in the background. Right. And it, it, it was uh, a, a difficult to toe the line, not difficult, but it's something we had to think about. Well, it seems like you're also kind of playing with the set itself at times. You know, obviously the porta potties is the most obvious thing, but you know, it does seem like there's engagement. Like you may be aware that there's a set, but you're actually playing with it too. And, and we, we always make these movies. We have we shoot so much stuff. We always make a second film, like six months later. It's called four point four point five or three point five or whatever. And there is a bit that is speaking of that. We we so we shot for a couple of weeks and had to shut down for COVID and for seven months came back and the first day we everyone came back it was like you know all these emails about the the you know all the procedures and testing and you know everyone's kind of nervous and we showed up and we had a pop-up tent and a conference and like a table around and the whole cast was supposed to gather for this meeting and a safety guy came out <laughs> from Paramount and he's like well, you know we're going to talk it and everyone had their masks on so nervous and being lectured by the guy at Paramount, and then there was a blow up. Um, what are they Bouncy called? Bouncy house. Bouncy house under the table. They just blew up and, <laughs> and just took everybody out, <laughs> and it kind of set the tone. Like, okay, we are going to test you, but we're also going to test you this other way. <laughs> the cast was angry. Like, I thought we were supposed to take this serious. <laughs> well, we are, but. Yeah. Footage is footage. Were there certain things you had to kind of nix because of COVID? Was we that... didn't get to prank. We normally do more pranks on the street, and you know, obviously Irving as uh, the old man, and um, and um, but so we 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 didn't do that as much. So we ended up pranking the, the cast even more, which mm -hmm. was even better. Yeah. And uh, Johnny, you got injured this time. I mean, you always get injured, but what happened? Yeah. Yeah. Yes, sir. Um, <laughs> The bull, uh, I got a broken wrist, broken rib, concussion, and a brain hemorrhage, and I spent the weekend in the hospital. And it took me like several months to be fully myself again. Um, but I'm back. <laughs> <laughs> and was that the end of the shoot, or you like there were some other things you still well, had to do? Well, we backload my, a lot of my stunts to the end of the film because we need to get everything else. Mm -hmm. And I did have like two or three larger stunts after that, which I'm bummed I didn't get to do. But my neurologist is like, you just, you just can't. Yeah. <laughs> so I, I, I didn't have anything else to prove. You know, <laughs> I felt we had a good movie in, in pocket. Yeah. Uh, but there were three good ideas. Okay. So, yeah, I don't know. <laughs> well, maybe the good ideas can be used another time. Yeah. <laughs> um, but in, in general, like in, in, in a sense of like there being a, a shot list, do you space out when somebody's going to be the subject of a prank and give them a week to recover from what that might be? Mm, not really. <laughs> Just mine, the bigger stunts, mine will space out. But uh, there's so many of us now, there's 12, so we can really pass around the love. Sure. But that's and it is love, right? I know it comes across as uh, complete mayhem, and it is mayhem. But we've been together for 
over 20 years, cast and crew. And I get a sense of that really watching this film is just how much we love each other and even though we give each other hell. Uh, I think I hug people in this film more than I have any other film. On the way over, he's like, I, I think as an older man, I'm, I, I hug a lot more. <laughs> <laughs> and I, I, it's one of the things I love about the films is, is how joyous everybody seems to be and how ultimately you hug people at the end of it rather than punch them in the face. But, I mean, has that happened? It has to have happened. I mean, there are a couple moments that you show us where it seems like there's a moment of anger, but it seems to diffuse. Oh, well, Jeff Tremaine and Rick Kosick, uh, our cameraman, have been in six fist fights, And Jeff has broken <laughs> six pairs of Kosick's glasses. And Kosick is so angry that Jeff has never paid for any of those glasses. <laughs> So yeah, we get in arguments sometimes, but it's all like, Jeff and Kasich couldn't be any closer. Mm -hmm. Like they are incredibly close. Like Kasich's at his house every weekend. Mm -hmm. So, um, and, and interesting note, in the opening of the film, Jeff broke Kasich's ankle when he was getting uh, sprayed down with semen. He fell on Kosick's ankle, and Kosick had to have surgery, and he was, but he, he, he did uh, uh, spend his time at Jeff's house getting better. So. Um, we were talking about this while you were uh, left when we were talking before, the, uh, before we came on stage, Spike. We were talking about how you don't seem to have you've avoided on-screen injury like everybody else seems to have I think, encountered this. I think Knoxville's very protective of me. I, always from the beginning, he's like, no, don't prank Spike, right? Right, I, I felt like we were lucky to have Spike, <laughs> so let's not attack him. Occasionally, though, I have gotten some. Actually, on number two, we were on the second film, I was about to leave town, and we had finished shooting, and, uh, and Knoxville's like, hey, you know, I'm, I'm worried about the movie. I, I want to have a, a meeting today. It's Saturday. Can you come over at 2? And I'm like, OK, yeah, sure. And so I come over, and it's 2 o'clock, and I push the doorbell. And as I'm pushing the doorbell, it's like, it, it's not plastic. It feels rubber. I'm like, that's not, doesn't feel like a doorbell. And before I could think, the whole thing, the airbag exploded into my face <laughs> and it took me out. And then I went inside, and everyone's like, watch his, on his TV, he, they have the cameras watching everyone get hit in the face with the airbag, and they're just drinking beers. And then 20 minutes later, Jeff shows up, and he gets blasted in the face, and <laughs> Steve-O, and da, 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 the whole day, just watching everyone get blasted in the face, and as everyone got more and more drunk. Did I do that to you? Oh, yeah. Oh, shit! <laughs> I'm sorry. <laughs> but that is one of the few times you have. Yeah, I don't you. target Spike because actually Spike will get you back five times as worse no matter what you do. <laughs> like, I don't like messing with him because he will win. <laughs> and, uh, yeah, I mean, he's, he's a great Academy Award winning filmmaker, <laughs> but he's a little off, so uh, he will get you back. <laughs> I love the I love the the spike. I, nobody has a career like yours to have this sort of level of respect and accolades in terms of directing films. But at the same time, this has been a thread for your most of your career is working on. This. And I'm very proud of that opening sequence. I have to say the uh, we <laughs> as good as anything we've done. We uh, yeah yeah yeah. And I the um, I don't know. It was it's it's like me and I. We all came from skateboarding, me and Jeff and most of the guys. And uh, we had, I, I, worked, I started, started this magazine called Big Brother. It was a skate magazine that, uh, that Jeff was the art director and then and became the editor for. And then Knoxville started writing stories for. And so we all sort of came from that world. And, uh, and I made skate videos with Mark Gonzalez. And, um, yeah. the, uh, and if anyone has never seen it, we did a video called Video Days. And Mark's part in it is one of the best parts in skateboarding. And uh, but, so we came, you know, so it, it sort of just is like, yeah, I, I feel like, um, yeah, people that like know, like Jeff calls them my artsy fartsy movies. Uh -huh. <laughs> 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 people that know my, those movies, they're like surprised that I do this. But like people from skateboarding, I think they're surprised that I do the other thing. Sure. But, but I, I love it. Maybe, maybe this is skate culture ultimately, but it doesn't seem like there's ever been this sense of like, well, you're gonna graduate beyond this. Like you're gonna make these fancy artsy fartsy films, you're gonna leave this behind. That just never was the case. It's, it seems like, it sounds like you're kind of 
communicating with Johnny about other stunts at the same time as you're working on these other films. Yeah, yeah. Actually, we did a movie called Bad Grandpa, mm -hmm. and as we were shooting and editing that, I was editing her. Oh my and, God. Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> and, and so I'd go from one edit room to the other edit room, or, we'd go, or I'd go from the edit room down to North Carolina, where I was dressed up as, in prosthetics as an old lady going on blind dates it, out of Craigslist. And uh, it was very, yeah, it was a nice balance. It was like kind of... <laughs> It wasn't a nice balance. I felt so bad because you were getting no sleep, uh, yeah. right? You were working so hard on her, and then like we doing Bad Grandpa, and you finally read the synopsis, and you're like, guys, this isn't a movie. Yeah, yeah. Right. <laughs> we, we wrote a treatment. We wrote a few-page treatment, and then I went off and shot edit, shot her, and then I came back, and so I hadn't, and they had worked on the script, and then we were about to shoot in like three weeks. And I read it, I was like, oh shit, this isn't a script, you guys. <laughs> no, 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 we already had shot, we already went out one time, and we we're about to go out the second time. And you're like, this, we gotta work. And so we shut down, <laughs> and thank God we did, because I was shooting a prank, and I had knew, I didn't have any idea where I was in the movie, right? I didn't know whether I was at the beginning, the middle, or the <laughs> end. So I'm just, basically it's a prank with no story, but Spike came in and made us, you know, really nail down the uh, story, which right. thank God, because me and Jeff were just winging it. <laughs> well, it's an interesting film in that way, right? Because it's more of a script. There needs to be more of a through line at the same time as it's sort of it's a yeah, jackass. Was, film I mean, too. that was an idea we had for a long time. I was always wondering if we could do a narrative movie where most of the people don't know they're in a movie, mm -hmm. and that was always seemed like a fascinating idea to try. And um, so that's that was part of the impetus. And then also, I think. We always had so much fun when he was Irving, and uh, yeah, it just seemed like it sort of just came together. It pained me not to play that today in the marathon, but it was one film too many. You for... put two people in. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, exactly. <laughs> um, I'd love to talk a little bit. I, I know. Um, I know that um, where you're coming from is not necessarily to have these films aspire to like classic films. At the same time, it's very hard not to see the parallels. It's hard Can not you hear to see. Him? Yeah, vacation. Okay. They can, yeah. Okay. Um, but, uh, well, so there's one, there's the direct references. Each film has, I think, beginning and the end tend to reference <laughs> other films or, or other genres. Like first film's sort of kind of like a Mad Max mm -hmm. beginning. The second film has these Busby Berkeley sequences. The third film has like this Zabriskie Point explosion sequence towards the end. Oh, We've yeah. Got Godzilla in the beginning of You're this. You're definitely way more highbrow than us. We're just like, <laughs> yeah, yeah. Up in slow well, motion. That's, that's my job to do that. That's what I'm saying. You don't need to. But I do think, I mean, those are not accidents. Those are, those are references. And I'm curious about how those references come for the, um, the homages in the film. Um, I get a lot of my ideas from cartoons. So. Yeah, he does. He thinks life is a cartoon. Yeah. It is Tom and Jerry and uh, yeah, Wiley Yeah, Bugs, Bugs Bunny and Roadrunner. And, <laughs> or, Coyote and Roadrunner. Uh, what was the question? <laughs> <laughs> well, I mean, the, the way that those in the audience or myself may see some of these residences with, with other films or other genres. Um, but you for know, the most we'll part, these are idea, actually direct. Like Jeff had an idea for a big dance sequence, I think. Mm -hmm. Was it Jeff in the end of, or the beginning of? Number two, it? the end of number two. I, think, number I thought two, it was yeah. you, but it could have been Jeff. I don't know. Yeah, I don't it's know. funny, we all either. But we did study those Busby Berkeley musicals afterwards. Mm -hmm. You know, um, but and we had Michael Rooney, who's the son of Mick, Mickey Rooney, choreograph it. Oh wow! And he choreographed that he was in there too. Oh wow! Yeah. Okay. Yeah. So we know, we have the ties. To, well, of course. Yeah. Um, I, I love Buster Keaton. Well, I was going to say, know? like a Buster Keaton seems clearly. But I, you know, I really things. didn't get into Buster Keaton until Jackass Number Two, and that's when I really started looking at Buster Keaton films, and some of his stuff inspired things in Jackass Number Two and. You know, onward. Well, the but, famous uh, house collapse. Before that, it was just yeah. cartoons for me, really. Um, this oh. is highbrow as it got for me. No, it's good. Um, Actually, the most highbrow thing I think that what inspired Jackass was I remember as a teenager hearing about a guy that shot himself with, with a rifle in an art gallery as an artist. Mm -hmm. And I didn't know until later his name was Chris Burden, but. Um, I think that always fascinated me, and uh, Andy Kaufman, mm -hmm. and so like those like those people that were like just tweaking their own, making making the world their own stage, yeah. and uh, I think that was yeah th I would say that maybe if, yeah. if I could name some highbrow yeah. stuff. No, no, I mean I feel like in some ways the the 
whatever, the, the lowbrow taking us on a ride is better than you wanting to be highbrow. Like, I'd rather you take us somewhere than, than try to be something highbrow. But I remember Chris Burton, like, he got shot in the arm or something, right? Against a, a garage door or no, something? In, in the art gallery. Oh, it was in the art, yeah. art gallery? Right. There was something else in front of a garage door. Yeah. And then he did something in the stream where he laid down in a sack in the middle of an intersection, I believe. He did some interesting things. Mm -hmm. yeah. <laughs> but the thing about performance artists, like I, I like some funny. of the things they do, <laughs> but I hate when they start describing what they do and telling me what it means. It's like, oh God, <laughs> don't tell me. Just, I, I like, just let me watch. Yeah. So. Well, I mean, I love the, that intersection between performance art and television and film, and it's, it's, all, it's all in there. Um, and I feel like if you, you could respond to any number of those things. Um, I'm curious about uh, a little bit of the construction of this. I mean, we talked about how it's not your standard script, but you are writing skits down. Um, there is, a, what's the order? How do you figure out the order of this? Obviously, like there's a continuity problem with this film in terms of there being a seven month gap, but you don't really care about that, which I love. No, we never know the order. It's, it's, it's same with the, when we did the show. It was always just shoot a bunch and then sort of piece it together like you're doing an album track listing. And, um, and is usually actually, uh, I only go on some of the shoots, so usually Jeff, if, when they shoot something that he knows, he, before he even looks at it, he's like, I think we got the opener, I think we got the closer, and, um, and he calls, and, he, and usually he's right, he's usually, you know, calls it. Mm -hmm. I think my favorite shots in the films are not the money shots where the thing happens, but it's the reaction shots, and there's always the reaction shots, and I'm interested in the evolution of that, of being like, the essential, like an essential element to, this, to, the, to the bits. Everything happened quite naturally. Um, just the glee of everyone on the set or the cast laughing, it's, it just seemed like a good thing to cut to because that's what's happening. You know? Yeah, I think when we first shot, it was just a couple, it was really just a camera or two. So I, when you're shooting, you'd always pan over. Mm -hmm. and, um, and I think on the first movie, I wanted to make sure, like, I, that, well, we had, all our crew was from skateboarding from Big Brother and we wanted, I wanted to make sure that we had somebody from the outside come in and shoot sort of like more of document everything. Mm -hmm. And uh, that's when we brought Lance in. So we brought him on the first movie. And he, he, he's a documentarian, so he just brought a different, you know, different sort sure. of aesthetic to the camera operating. And a nervous tummy. And a nervous <laughs> tummy. I, I feel, I, I would love to, you're not mics, but if you don't mind, uh, was like some of that just instinct in terms of like where you were putting the camera? Cause, or were you? Just, just come up here, Lance. Jesus <laughs> Christ. Get up here. <laughs> Apologies to the cameraman for this. <laughs> you can take it. Hello, everyone. Thanks for being here. <laughs> <laughs> um, yeah. I, <laughs> I, <laughs> you broke the mics. <laughs> I'd, uh, I'd shot some stuff with you prior to that, yeah. and I was making personal films, and <laughs> you know had seen more as a brisky point type of stuff, yeah. and did documentary work, but also personal filmmaking. Like Jen Cohen was a, a great inspiration and colleague, and I'm sure you've shown his work here. Of course, indeed. Um, and so it was great to kind of come into this world through Spike, and you know instantly like Knoxville is just like a great character that we met in person, writing in LA at that time. And the assignment to sort of like go in on a few things on the TV show, like when you had Brad Pitt, where you were spending oh, yeah. more money on like makeup or trying to trick Knoxville by you getting into prosthetics. Oh, yeah. They'd kind of bring me in for a few things like that. And I loved the feeling and the camaraderie of what all the kind of Big Brother magazine people had been doing and felt at home like with them. And, and it was fascinating to be able to kind of pan from someone who's nervous or apprehensive or being talked into something that they don't fully understand. Mm -hmm. Like, wait, what am I gonna do today? And then seeing the hesitation or concern, but also the desire to get footage on people, mm -hmm. like that sort of human aspect was fascinating to me. And I felt like I was good at sort of getting in the mix and being gentle with everyone, but getting that open Can footage. One of my favorite things in the first movie is Ryan Dunn with, ended up being the last piece. And um, it was called Toy Car. Mm -hmm. and <laughs> it was called Butt X-Ray. <laughs> yeah, it was called Butt X-Ray at the time. <laughs> and for those who hadn't seen it, um, <laughs> 
he, he puts a toy car up his butt and goes to the hospital and says, my butt hurts. <laughs> and the x-ray hit. <laughs> and, um, the, uh, and so my favorite moment is they're in the van going. Steve-O was supposed to do it, and he turned it down. And uh, Lance is interviewing him. And so Lance sort of just brought, like, a, as everything's happening, he's just talking to everybody. And so Lance is like, why did you turn it this bit down? And Steve-O's like, oh, I told my dad we're going big this, this on this one. And, you know, uh, and, um, he, and I told him about this idea, and I could hear it in his voice. He was, he was, he was, like, was he mad about it? And, and Steve was like, no, he just sounded disappointed. <laughs> was like, it was, that, that was like, yeah, anyways, that's what Lance brings to it, just those little, all the things between the things. Mm. Mm. <laughs> Woo! <laughs> I'm gonna take, we will take this one off the, yeah, it's fine. It's fine, it's fine. Um, I think it's this one. This is now the problem child. Oh shit. Way to go, Lance. <laughs> Let me try this for a second. I'll put it down if it's a problem. Um, I don't know who, who else has this experience, but these films, they, they, they kind of create their own sense of time for me. They could be 15 minutes into it, it could be four hours into it. I actually lost, lose all track. That's good news for us. Yeah. That's good news for us. <laughs> but but it, well, in, in a good way, it also works both ways. Because you also, in a sense, are you're, you're sort of trapped in it. You know, like there's no, you don't know when the middle is. You don't know when the end is coming. There's just another one and another one and you another one. You feel like one. you're being assaulted. <laughs> <laughs> a little bit, a little bit, yeah. <laughs> um, well, I think we're almost Should out Should we of take time. any questions? You guys have any questions? Yes. Yeah, I, I mean, uh, three things happen in this, right? Which is that Knoxville takes like the hit of his life, Danger Aaron becomes a man, and then we finally. <laughs> <laughs> What's the third thing? We meet Dark Shark, which I think Dark is Shark. Like the real. Dark, Dark Shark, Shark is the best. Yeah. yeah. Please tell you what. So how you talked Dark Shark into doing all this crazy how you shit? Bully Dark Shark. Yeah. Well, we usually pay Dark Shark into it. <laughs> <laughs> Dark Shark, you do shot with Dark Shark, right? Yeah. You guys, yeah. Um, through the production company that you guys have with Jeff Tremaine, uh, Dick House at the time, we made a series for Adult Swim called Loiter Squad. Uh, yeah. And so Tyler, the creator, Lionel Boyce, Taco, and Jasper were sort of the main four characters of that. But through that, we met Jasper's father, Dark Shark, who was instantly just a fascinating addition. He hadn't really left the neighborhood of where he'd grown up. Longwood. He, yep. Um, other than time he'd served, he hadn't really been out of that area. So everything you shot with him was like mm -hmm. seeing the world through new eyes, but with like a very intense personal lived experience and perspective on everything. So it was great to kind of like bring him in and start shooting for him. And you guys knew right away he'd be great to kind of bring in for all these things. He has like intense phobias about birds. <laughs> <laughs> he'd never been on an airplane before. We talked him into flying to Hawaii for a He cried concert. the whole way. And then, like, he thought, like, how do I, I'm going to have to take a boat or else I live in Hawaii now. Like, you know, <laughs> um, so there's some, some great stuff that you guys have coming up with him that I'm very in excited 4. 5, to discover yeah. in 4.5. And yeah. his Instagram is insane. Mm -hmm. Like, I love him so much. Uh, Dark Shark's the best. Um, one more question in the back there. Me? Yeah. Well, there were two more questions. Oh, two more. <laughs> one, one, for, one for now. One for now. Uh, it's a really dumb one. Johnny, how did you prep your arm bar for the rumble? <laughs> oh, no. my God. I, okay, I am so... Oh, you tell me. Wait, wait. <laughs> That's right. That's right. It took four men to get me out of the ring. Four men. <laughs> And that low down and dirty Sami Zayn had to kick me in the face to get me out, but I'll get my revenge. I promise each and every one of you, I'll get my revenge. <laughs> and you guys in the middle the of the Oh, thank, thank you. Thank you. I love y'all, man. Been watching y'all forever. So my question is, how do you know when someone is worthy of being a part of the jackass cast? Good At question. the end of the day, honestly, we just have to like hanging out with you. Yeah. You you know because it's a it's a the camaraderie is a very special element of jackass and. We can find people who do crazy stuff or this or that, but you have to have a, 
You have to have guts. You have to have a sweetness about you. We have to like hanging out with you. Otherwise, it's going to upset everything on the set. Mm, absolutely. Yeah. Yeah. <laughs> well, thank you guys so much. And th anyone that stayed through all four movies, um, you'll win a donut next time I see you in the streets. <laughs> thank you, everybody. Thank you. Thank you. Thank you. Thank you. Thank you. Thank you. Thanks. That was fun. That's so fun. Really good. All right. Bless you guys. Be careful on the way home.